It's been a minute since I posted a video, so I'm dropping a banger on your fat fucking pussy ass. Today we're going over a match from ICW No Holds Barred that's been available on my Patreon to watch for a fucking year now, bro. I made it last September. It's been a minute, so I'm dropping a fucking bomb on you. Tonight we'll be watching Hoodfoot Mo Atlas versus Sadika in a death match from ICW No Holds Barred Volume 31. The match took place on August 20th of 2022 last year at Summit Park District in Chicago, Illinois. They're both insane. This match is about to be fucking nuts. Like I said, you could have saw this a fucking year ago, bro. Sign up to the Patreon. Shot fades in in Summit Park District with Larry Legend standing in the ring on the mic. Please enjoy. It's for you hear everyone. Sadika's music come over the speaker. It's for everyone. Focus. I'm ready. I know you are. I'm mostly talking to him. He's He's a a Get a shot of the curtain and Sadika comes out with her Mexican flag with the graphic on the screen. Arena. She starts walking around the ring in Summit Park District giving out high fives and fist bumps. She walks around and gives high fives to longtime Deathmatch fan Mike and the rest of the fans. Do you? Everything. She frightens me, but I like being frightened sometimes. I agree with the announcers on that one. Finally makes her way she around like the entire like ring and like starts climbing up the stairs into the chain. Sure. See her walking across the ring with her Mexican flag. Is it Poses with the flag and we hear the fans give it up. Earlier on, she just... It's impossible to explain her. See her take a look at the camera and she walks around the ring getting hyped up. So violent and so dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's impossible to explain. See her walk over to the side of the ring and start posing with the Mexican flag for photos. Understands what this entails. All of a sudden, future comes over the speakers, and you know what that means. My God, is this going to be something else? Yeah, I'm a little worried. No, I'm a lot worried. Hear the beat drop for March but Madness, March and Hoodfoot Madness comes out with his Chicago flag with the graphic on the screen. Way through the curtain, Chicago's own. Hoodfoot goes hard as fuck in the entranceway, telling the fans to give it up. Holds up that Chicago flag, proud as a motherfucker. Crowd is going fucking nuts, bro. We get a get good shot back. of Hoodfoot walking around the ring and he poses with his Chicago flag. Showing unbelievable recovery. Hoodfoot is loving this, walking around in his hometown and everyone shows him love. Been drinking, guys. Tell Hoodfoot's in the fucking zone and he just keeps walking around, giving out high fives and fist bumps. See the fans losing it as he makes his way around the ring. These are the type of people that. They pour beer into their cereal in the morning. Hoodfoot sees another dude with a Chicago Here flag, and he's like, oh, fuck yeah, and starts getting so hyped up, and we see a fan walk up and put a hat on his head. It doesn't matter. Fucking love Deathmatch fans. Hoodfoot just rocks it. Gives out his last fist pounds and starts staring at Sadika. Get a shot of her in the ring holding her flag, and then we get another shot of Hoodfoot walking up the stairs. Climbs through the chains with the hat still on his head, and we get a shot of the hard cam of both of them in the ring. Anticipation for. You see Hoodfoot raise up his Chicago flag, and Larry gets on the mic. Larry eyes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, up for the introduction. Larry introduces Sadika. Introducing first, standing to my left, fighting out of Mexico City, Mexico, she is. Jesus fucking Christ, Larry. Oh boy. Gets back on the mic and introduces Hoodfoot. And her opponent, standing to my right, fighting out of anywhere, nowhere, by way of Chicago, Illinois. This is the Hoodfoot. 
Oh, Your hood foot's hometown, good. give it the she fuck up for him. Enjoy every, even See him hold up the, the Chicago flag, flag and he starts walking and takes the hat off and throws it. This match is about to be fucking nuts. But the energy when she's in They stand there in the ring on the hard cam it, showing off really, their flag. It's hard to explain. It's different. It's, it's, it, it feels like things are about to go wrong. Camera zooms in as they debate on whose flag is doper. In the main event of the Vortex, it can go much more wrong right here with Mo Atlas. SPO tells them to chill and Hoodfoot starts going nuts. I swear. You get the start of the match as Hoodfoot keeps shoving a Chicago flag in her face so she kicks him in the nuts and bounces off the chains and goes for a clothesline but he Here kicks her in the, the face. Bell. bell rang while he kicked Ooh, her and he bounces off the chains and goes for a clothesline and gets a big kick. TNA bounces kick. off the chains and tries to jump on Hoodfoot and he catches her but accidentally drops her on the mat and then puts her in a Boston Crab. My man just turns it right over into that. The foot's got that shit locked in, and the cameraman zooms in on Sadika, and he just gets off of her out of nowhere and puts her in a camel clutch instead. Rotates over. Just a little fun fact, this match could not end by submission. Fantastic way to wear. Sadika starts elbowing Hoodfoot in the ribs a few times, and they both stand up to their feet. He grabs on a hood foot and gives him a snapmare and then just starts pulling on his cheeks. If I had to bet on this match because it's such a fucking coin flip. He takes him by the face and spins I mean, him around and stands him up to his feet and puts him in the corner and gives him an Irish whip, but he counters and she counters that and sends him into the corner and clotheslines him. He nailed him and she goes into the opposite corner to do it again, but he runs and clotheslines her. He runs into the opposite corner to get more speed and she pounces on him. Crashed into his ass and runs into the opposite corner and he runs and clotheslines her again. Just follow. Hoodfoot grabs her and picks her up for a big belly to belly and slams her on the mat and he goes for the pin and gets a two count. Enough for a two count, but that's it. Hoodfoot's like, all right, let's see what this bitch is made of and stands up and takes off his red jacket. The hips. Throws it to the outside and we see her stand back up on the hard cam and she runs and goes for a clothesline, but Hoodfoot ducks out and gives her a big back suplex. Beautiful. Beautiful. He takes the shorts off his feet and throws them to the outside and then stands up and goes over to the chains and picks up his first light tube bundle. Really look. He sets it down on the mat and picks up Sadika for another back suplex. She was coming down. Check out this fan angle I got from King's Road. Here's a longer replay I found of the back suplex. See it one more time in slow mo. He fucking exploded through that bundle, and we see referee SPO kick and charge the glass out of the way as the fans chant a fuck em up hoodfoot chant. But Foot's loving it and walks around the ring with his arms up People and then he's like, wait, what am I doing? And goes and gets on top of her for the pin and gets another two count. They are as hot now as they were coming in earlier. But Foot checks in with SPO and she fucking blasts his ass. Patrick O'Brien. Let's fucking go. Let's see that shit in slow-mo. <laughs> Fucking destroyed him and she grabs him by the head and throws him outside the ring. He follows him to the outside and grabs a bundle and hits him, but it doesn't break at first. Either SPO or Hood There's another quick replay from King's Road. Grabs Hoodfoot and gives him a few forearms to the face and then puts him in a headlock and starts walking him through the crowd. Now you are in Sadika's domain. Takes Hoodfoot and tries to throw him into the fan chairs, but he counters and throws her there into him. There is no out of bounds. But look at Hoodfoot able to turn the table, send her flying. You get a nice chairs. shot of all the glass and mercury covering Hoodfoot. Look at his fucking arm. Between shows where he walks up and grabs Sadika by the hair. That you play the role of distractor, like the beat, if you will. He smashes her face into the seat of a chair. 
What the fuck? Pay attention to that cut on Hoodfoot's arm. I thought it was from when he gave her that back suplex through the tubes, but he landed on the other arm. It's entirely possible it came from this bundle shot, too. <laughs> Hear me out, though. She also hit him in the left shoulder with that bundle of tubes, so it could have been from that also, but I'm just a handsome Irish fuck, so let me know what you think in the comments. He eggs the crowd on and punches Sadika in the back. What? Hoodfoot stands her up and sits like her down in the open. seat as all the fans chant his name. Blood pouring from his head, but that arm is what I'm concerned about. Hoodfoot walks about. up and gives her a headbutt and walks away, and I'm Hoodfoot guessing he's probably checking out the cut on his arm, but she gets up and runs at him. Oh, no. She's fucking insane. She's running a Hoodfoot to fight him more, and she picks up another bundle and fucking destroys him. He's bleeding buckets. Holy shit, bro. Let's see that again. Back to the match, he grabs Hoodfoot by the head once again and starts walking him through the crowd. Sadika. Taking Mo Atlas. They walk over by the merch tables and she sets up a garbage can and then she backs up and tries to give Hoodfoot an Irish whip into it, but he counters and sends her into it. You get a shot of Hoodfoot's back covered in blood, mercury, and glass. Hoodfoot's back in the game and he starts walking up to Sadika and he grabs her by the hair. Can we maybe get them like a spiritual guide to get them back towards the ring? Stands her up and starts walking towards guy. the ring with her but then sits her down in a seat and gives her headbutt. Hoodfoot trying to see Hoodfoot parting the deathmatch sea of fans. Here. See him bent over trying to catch his breath and then he rises up with one arm and runs at her. Well, Mo definitely has something. Moves out of the way and Hoodfoot eats shit into the fan well, chair. Just like that. Morena Extrema. Adika walks up to the ring and grabs some wooden closet doors and pulls them out. Here she comes. starts making her way through the crowd. It's going right the us. wrong direction. Carries the closet doors all the way over to the bleachers. Here she comes. Yeah, go that way. Asks one of the fans to hold the closet doors for her, and he does, and she starts grabbing chairs. It's away from me. Who are literally asking for tape for Hoodfoot's arm as she sets up the closet doors. He gets the chairs set up and they lay the closet doors down, but they fall over. The fuck is going on? You got a fucking insane shot of the vagina on Hoodfoot's arm. Oh my god, that arm, dude. Not good. Bro, that is so fucked. Camera. And we hear the fans asking for tape. Asadika sets up the closet doors. Not a good situation. Someone gets SPO some tape and we get a shot of him taping Hoodfoot's arm. On the arm. Trying to tape it shut. SPO wraps the tape There's around his arm here. like it's Sabu Just and Terry fucking back. ECW back oh, in the day. Serious. There's a fan oh. angle of the whole thing. Oh my god! Get him some tape! Get him some fucking tape, boys! Damn it! Hey! Somebody give me some fucking tape! Oh god! Where's the fucking tape? Take me the fuck up! Let's go, Mo! Come on, Mo! Back to the match, we hear the crowd chanting Hoodfoot on as always. From every part of his body. He's fucking covered in blood, bro, and he starts walking around looking for Sadika. And showing Hoodfoot so much love, and we see Sadika walking up to the ring. The chaos. That is Sadika. She brings him over to the bleachers where she has the closet door set up on chairs. Out of control as she sets up these doors. You see her start grabbing onto Hoodfoot as they try to get their footing on the bleachers. So many times. Gives him one headbutt and then grabs him and gives him more. 
getting his tough grabs Hoodfoot's arm and puts it over her head and gives him a huge fucking superplex through the closet door. As she takes Bro, no fucking way we gotta see that shit again. See that one more time in slow mo. Back to the match, we see Ring Crew checking on both wrestlers. What strength from Sadika! You're a holy shit champ from the crowd, and we get another shot of them laid out on the ground, and Sadika tries standing up. Suffering a serious injury and he's already back on her feet and starts walking towards the ring. Ramona Bloodlock. PO checks on Hoodfoot and it looks like he's back on his feet and back in the game. Concerned right now about the well being. Starts walking through the wild ICW fans and we get a shot of Sadika setting up another wooden door. Pushes the soda cans off and then leans the door up against the apron and turns around and she grabs a chair from my boy Ryan and his girlfriend. Finds a steel chair and picks it up and goes after Hoodfoot. Sorry. He hits him and it does nothing, so he fucking kills him. He decides to no sell it and hits him with a chair and he starts falling back onto the stairs and she walks up and grabs his dick and twists it. Gives him another big headbutt and turns around and goes back to the chair. Kind Hoodfoot, we see Sadika's going to work and she sets up another chair and then tries to bridge the door across it. Murder at this point. SPO helped her get it set up, and we get a shot of Hoodfoot's bloody ass fucking back. Hoodfoot keeps insisting. You see Sadika still adjusting the doors on the chairs, and you have to remember Hoodfoot has that giant fucking cut, and she walks up and kicks him. Condition at this point, tries to grab him and set him on the wood without breaking it. He's a big boy. Got that door. Sits him down situated. and headbutts the fuck out of him. Laying him down across it. Delivering those headbutts. Finally spreads him out on top of the door. He walks up to the ring and slides under the bottom chain and starts climbing up the corner. press. Oh, please, no. He stands up and climbs to the edge and jumps off with a corkscrew splash like he's too tough Tony. Reina Extrema! Bro, are you fucking kidding me? Let's see that again. Here's her jumping off in slow-mo. Shit was nuts and they lay there in pain as the fans chant ICW. The strongest fucking... See SPO bent over checking on both wrestlers to see if they're still in it and they still are. That causes even more damage. Sadika rolls over and tries picking herself up as Hoodfoot lays with his arm in the air. Really in a lot of trouble right now, and the longer this match goes on, the more ridiculous it is. He's already back up, and she walks up to Hoodfoot and stands him up and brings him over to the ring and throws him in. Lose one more swing for defense, but how much more can this guy have? In the hard cam, we see Sadika walking up the stairs, and she climbs through the chains into the ring. Because that's a... See her walking around the ring, getting the crowd hyped up. Sadika starts calling for a weapon, and she walks around the ring, anxiously waiting on it, and then we finally see the ring crew come up with a giant fucking light tube what bundle the rake. What is that? Grabs a hold of it and almost takes Hoodfoot's fucking head off. Last bundle is still intact, so she fucking breaks it. It was insane. Let's see that again. Hands a light tube break to the outside and then turns around and kicks Hoodfoot onto his back and goes into the corner for a chair. Sadika. We see her call for a second chair and she grabs both of them and starts walking in the ring. 
How about Hood Foot Mo Atlas? That basically Hood stands Hood in the middle Hood of the ring, gives one chair to SPO and takes the other, and they both set him up. You see him stirring still. Look at the look. Attica takes both chairs and adjusts them. Nice, Ronnie. But Foot finally starts making it back up to his feet. Can't put out. Danica kicks him in the thigh, but he no sells it and takes her by the hair and gives her a big head. The mentality of living. The Grabs her by the hair and takes a bundle of three tubes and cracks it over her head. Here we go. See that shit again. Adika falls into the corner and Hoodfoot walks up and grabs her by the hair. Grabs a bundle of tubes and stands her up and she grabs one of her own and kicks it into his ball. Silence and hush come over the crowd. Kick that huge bundle right into his fucking nuts, bro. I got a couple angles. Immediately walks over to the side of the ring and grabs the pane of glass. SPO helps her pick up the pane of glass and they walk it over to the two chairs and try to bridge it across. Dangerous. Ugh. Get the pane set up and Tadika walks over and grabs Hoodfoot as the fan chant ICW. Sets up that pane of glass. Brings Hoodfoot into the corner and sets him up for another suplex. But Foot counters and knees her, which sends her into the middle of the ring. The idea, though, follows her into the middle of the ring, and gives her a big spear. Laceration on the arm of Hood. On the arm of Hood. Goes for the pin and gets a fucking two count. Press. Not enough to put away Lorena Extrema. Hoodfoot sits her on his knees thinking of his next move as the crowd chants his name. Seems to still be. Hoodfoot's got his game plan together and he gets up and grabs Sadie Cat. After how much he's bled. Drags her into the corner by her hair. Where the fuck he's at, but he seems totally aware. It's just so scary after what he's been through. Brings her into the corner and lifts her up and starts perching her up on the corner. Hoodfoot starts climbing up the chains and Sadika grabs him. Hoodfoot is literally standing on the chains with all of his weight. They start saying something to each other and Hoodfoot climbs up on the platform and they're both on there and start fidgeting around. It almost looks like Sadika wants to go for a back the suplex, but they grab doing? onto each other and take a dive. Holy shit! shit! Russian fucking leg sweep through the pane of glass. That shit was fucking nuts. Here's a couple replays I found. Fucking Christ. Hoodfoot and Sadika lay there in all the broken glass as the crowd goes insane. Do that glass! Come on, Mo! Hoodfoot tries to crawl over to Sadika. 
finally crawls over and gets on top you. and hooks the Let's leg and gets the fucking three count. Oh, he did it! Future's March Madness comes over the speakers and Larry declares Hoodfoot the winner. Get him the fuck out of there. Hoodfoot wrestled that entire match with that giant Some car on his arm, bro. Way. He's a fucking Hood beast. Bo Atlas they both lay there in the glass, and Sadika oh, sets up first. Drama. We see the dude in the American flag overalls hand the Chicago flag to SPO. SPO hands it Nasty. over to Hoodfoot. Fucking dangerous laceration on the arm of Hoodfoot. He helps Hoodfoot up to his feet and raises his arm in victory. Don't want to see any of these guys or girls suffer any type of injury. But Hoodfoot gets an evil fucking smile shit. on his face and holds up the flag for the fans. And I respect and love everything they're doing out there. But See Sadika in the chains and she walks over and grabs her Mexican flag. Sometimes you wonder if it's worth it, and then you hear the reaction from this crowd and the look on the face of Hoodfoot. Hoodfoot starts getting exactly fucking hyped. He wants to be doing what he wants to do. He's the real deal. Tadika bends over and picks up a dollar bill that a fan threw in the ring. Looks like she goes to give him the dollar and that he tries to grab it, but she actually right tries there. to give him a handshake. Wow. Sadika and Hoodfoot raise their arms with their flags in a wholesome deathmatch moment. Sadika bends over and picks up another dollar. Fans are just throwing money into the ring for them now. Hoodfoot and Sadika are like, oh fuck yeah, and start picking up the dollar bill. They're real ones, folks. Hoodfoot throws up the Mexican flag as Sadika reps the Chicago flag. These fans in Chicago just witnessed some fucking ultra-violent madness. And we Hoodfoot still and Sadika both stretch each other's go. flag out and then hug each other with it in another wholesome deathmatch moment. How much more I can take of this shit. It's good to be the king. Such a cool sign of respect from both tired. wrestlers. And you know we're going to continue on to the night with this shit. Fans are still throwing money show. in the ring after that sick oh, fucking no. match. The fucking ICW crew is in They keep Chicago. collecting the money off the ring, the fans break out into it. That was awesome, champ. And we ain't here to fuck around. Sadika gets down on her knees and asks Hoodfoot to join her. Both wrestlers sit there on their knees holding up each other's flag and collecting money off the fucking ring like they deserve. As they pose for pictures, the whole fucking building gives it up. Both stand back up and give each other another hug and another wholesome deathmatch moment. Wild match. Huge win for Hood. Hood is so fucking dope for wrestling the match with his arm cut like that, but dude, that was dangerous as fuck. Sadika. Sadika sits down crazy. and takes a picture with a fan as Hoodfoot walks up with the Mexican flag. Conventional. Walks to the side of the ring and starts giving some fans some fist bumps. There's only one. They walk around the ring celebrating as the fans are fucking loving. Get out there and see what she's all about because words don't do justice that's an attraction right there but foot and sadika are like let's head she down to business and start splitting seats. up the dollar bill so dope she that the fans gave them money like that the and they insane. fucking deserve it especially hoodfoot so much respect the fans throwing money in the ring Love to see that. Reminiscent of Arena Mexico. Where it's been they walk around the so ring celebrating and Hoodfoot goes over to the chains and leans over and tells them to light his fucking blunt. Money. Fuckers are out there grinding and trust me, they appreciate the love. 
Hey, Ron. What's up, buddy? The fans spark up Hoodfoot's blunt, and he talks to Sadika in the ring, and that's a wrap on this match, guys. Big win for Hoodfoot. We got one more? Do we? You got one more in you? No. Yes, you do. <laughs> hey, and I, I didn't mean what I said earlier about lemon grab. You're more, a, you're more of an Abraka Daniel. I did a podcast with Hoodfoot, and we with went Hoodfoot. over a ton of shit. Rest, to Spoke about a shitload of stuff, like the Slade stabbing incident. Fortunately, Zoom was being a piece of shit on Hoodfoot's phone, so we don't have video, but we do have the audio. We also talked about how he was the first deathmatch back for Necro Butcher. Touch on a lot of things, like how he got his name, some family stories growing up, getting into deathmatches, his favorite wrestlers, stunts, and way more. Sit back and enjoy, guys. Yeah, that's all good, all man. Right. How you, how you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm surviving. I'm getting ready for the weekend. Uh, I got the I got the big rematch uh, coming up, so uh, it's gonna be me and me and Brandon one more time. Oh yeah, I've been I've been meaning to ask you, bro. Where did the name Hoodfoot come from? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's a it's it's a long short story. Uh, basically. When I first when I first left my training school, uh, my original trainer, and started going on the road with uh, with uh, Randy Schwartz, Randy Schwartz, Satu. Um, the gimmick I wanted to do was a deck collector. I want to be mm -hmm. I want to be a pro wrestling deck collector. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and basically, it was going to be I think deck collector, but basically, I was going to be a drug, pro wrestling drug dealer. It was <laughs> it was basically just going to be big worm. From Friday, yeah, uh, <laughs> and low key, it was, I wanted to do. I wanted to have a name like Big Word, so we started messing around with. We started messing around with names. Uh, Damn. One of them was like Ghetto Yeti, um, <laughs> and we finally hit like Hoodfoot, and it kind of kind of kind of stopped. Looked at each other and was like maybe, and by the end Dude, of that weekend, it, bro, it, it, it worked. Man, dude, I look, I, bro. I when I say, I look, I'm 34. I feel every bit of it, man. I, I've been <laughs> around wrestling my damn near my entire life, man. I kid you uh, not. I was over. Uh, my dad took us over one of his buddy's houses. He was about to play cards, and it was the raw. And I remember it was Monday, and uh, mm -hmm. the raw he turned on for us was literally. Uh, it was the it was after Owen Hart's passing. No. Okay, so ninety nine. Like when I, yeah, bro. When I say I've been around wrestling like my entire like, damn, is in is I've been I've been blessed. Put uh, it that way. Yeah. Hell yeah. Do you, can you remember the first like hardcore or ultra violent thing that you saw in wrestling? Um, I want to say it had to be either Mankind Boiler Room Brawl or Ooh. Brawl or. Ooh. Uh, or honestly, it's also Mick Foley related. Uh, it was ECW. I want to say it was ECW, and it was showing clips because it wasn't ECW uh, over here, but it was a barbed wire match of uh, yeah, Jack. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I just remember going like, "How the hell is he in ECW and WWF?" You yeah, know, man. like. It's like, crazy. You know, listen, man. I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm the sharpest tool in the shed. When, but when I was yeah. a kid, I was pretty fucking stupid. And I was like, it has to be these two places at once. And Mick, was Mick Foley your favorite? Oh, uh, dude, Mick Foley was Mick Foley. Uh, so Mick Foley, Godfather, uh, the Hardy Boy, yeah, he... and like, you know, like a real wild one is Test. Taz? Oh, wow. Test. You know, Test. Oh, Test. Okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah Test. R.I.P., man. And, Dude, Tess was like, Tess legit was like dope as shit when I was a kid. He was, bro. bro. That match like, he had with Shane the, McMahon at SummerSlam 99, the street fight. Oh, I fucking love that match, yeah. man. Bro, uh, like, street shit, like, me and my brother used to fucking jump. From, we had a, we had a, uh, we had a bunk bed in our room. 
and we would take the top mattress off and put it on the yeah, floor man. and jump from our t- <laughs> and jump from our bunk bed to the floor, and we would do chest elbow, chest elbows, and low downs. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you do it, brother. <laughs> uh, are you like a fan of like jackass stunts and shit too? Oh, bro! Like I was man, early two thousands. Hell yeah, man! Yeah, me and my brother yeah. get the me and my brother get the shopping cart skit. Fuck yeah, dude! Yeah, is that like your and, first uh, fucking uh, real like, crazy injury? Uh, no. When I first came out, I had an umbilical cord infection, and I oh, had shit. a. I want to say, yeah. my mom told me the doctor told her I had a thirty uh, percent chance of. Uh, Thirty uh, percent chance of survivability or whatever, bro. Wow. I like I say, I tell people a lot. Man, I'm I'm blessed to be here, man. Dude, yeah. that's crazy, bro. Thank God you made it, bro. Still wouldn't have the the biggest black deathmatch wrestler ever if you if that shit would have happened, bro. Right, <laughs> literally, Fact, man. man. Like, bro, I'm be honest with you, man. I don't know how the fuck I keep making it. Like, guys, <laughs> apparently, there's, apparently, apparently, God wants to do something with me, man. Cause I yeah. keep I keep dodging death. Definitely, definitely, bro. And uh, so then the the other one was your match with Sadika, man. That shit was fucking awesome for ICW. Yeah, actually, that was uh, I want to say that was my first death match back. Yep, uh, it, I'm it, pretty sure it was. was. And and you cut your first... arm again. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What the hell, man? Yeah, and... So here's the thing about that. That was a freak accident, man. Yeah. So I was going to um, ask you what what caused that. So there's a spot that I like to do. Uh, I haven't done it. I haven't done. It, I don't think I've done it since uh, since mm-hmm. Chicago. Uh, but it's I sit him down in a chair. I do a big walk away. Uh, you know the big Sammy Callahan kind of run around the ring thing. And when yeah, I yeah. yell for a crossbody, they move. And I eat mm-hmm. shit into the chairs. Yeah. Uh, there just happened to be a straight piece of glass. And when I no hit. No way. Yep. That's what caused it? And Yeah, that's what caused it. What? And I never forget. I, I never forget my boy, uh, my boy SPO. He comes up to me and goes, yo, I think your arms opened up again. I went, no fucking shit. Oh. I was like, no way. And he goes, no, nah, bro, you bleed it again. And I look down. And Dude. it fucking it was open. And I was like, that's a new one. He goes, bro, I think you're going to have to stop the match. I said, fuck that shit. Give me some tape. Hell no. I'm not stopping this match. Bro, that's so crazy. Because I, I had covered it on my Patreon. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm do- redoing it right now to put up on YouTube. And I, I was looking at it. And I was like, so when did it actually happen? And I remember you gave her a back suplex onto a bundle of light tubes in the very beginning of the match. I I was like, yeah. dude, that's the only real like glass spot that happened before that cut. So I was like, I guess it, maybe they rolled on the light tubes wrong or some shit when you get because you guys kind of like rolled in the glass after. I was like, I think he must have rolled on it yeah. in a certain way that cut his arm open. Like I was speculating all types of shit, man. I was like, <laughs> deep on I'm digging I'm, through, zooming in on shit. I'm like, what could it be? What could it be? Uh, damn, it was from when, they, when she moved. No way. I, I was. I was legit. I was legit thinking about it the whole time, and Ugh. in my head, I went. I was like, "There's no other way that could happen, except for yeah. when I did that." Because I, because I never forget. I remember, I remember seeing a shit ton of glass on the out there. It was like just, it was a fucking double. It was a double header show. It was glass everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. And I just remember fucking when I, when I rolled back up, like it just. Mm. He's just like, dude, you cut back open. I'm like, nah, bro, fuck that. Ain't no, way oh, dude, it. you'll see. I got, I got fan video from some of the fans in the crowd of the, when you get your arm stitched. You're like, tape me the fuck up right now. Let's go. And the referee's like, all right, all right. Yeah. He's taping you up, and the, the the fans like, let's go, Mo. Let's go, Mo. Yeah. Get back in there, Mo. <laughs> I got that shit, bro. You'll see it. It's yeah, gonna man. be awesome, man. Uh, yeah, the ref, the ref was fucking SBO, man. That was uh, my best friend. Yeah, man. yeah. All right, he recently yeah. passed. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, man, uh, it, that, crazy, that weekend, bro. look, that that day was a long one, and then I also had to go back to my. I went, I went and stayed a while. My uh, to go see my family. 
So mm-hmm. you could only imagine. They haven't seen me since I got sliced open. And I almost died uh, no. two oh. months ago, like <laughs> like three three or four months ago. I almost died. You back with another guy? I still back up. <laughs> yeah, I still back up with another guy. They're like, "What the fuck?" And I go, "This is bad. dude." They're probably like, "What is he doing out there?" <laughs> <laughs> but bro, oh, man. They, they, my do they see my like how? So many questions. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I bet. But do they see how how crazy, like how much history you're making? Though, do they know that? Yes and no. Uh, I think they, yeah. So you kind of gotta get into know, it to understand it. Yeah, they know because I tell them. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think they really grasp it. Uh, like. I don't think my dad, like, my dad didn't really get it until he came to that show and he saw afterwards how many people came up and interacted oh, yeah. and did all this. And he kind of mm-hmm. still like, oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Um, like, it's, it's really weird to tell my family, like, I know, like, in your head, success is a monetary value. But to me... Mm-hmm. My success right now is being able to do something that nobody else has done before me. Yeah, that for real. Like, like, like there's for real. There's still yet to be a repeat death match, death match, uh, death death match tournament winner, right? There's mm-hmm. yet to be a two time or a multi time or a multi holder of a death match, oh, a death right. match company that's black. For real, bro. These You're coming for that shit, man. Things. Yeah, man, these are things that's on my list that I go, I, if yeah, I accomplish these, real. right, I look, uh, I hate to say it, but I hate saying it, but man, I, I'm laying down the groundworks, right? Mm-hmm. I like, I hate saying like, I'm him because I'm not, because I'm going to be honest with you. There's going to be somebody, there's going to be somebody that comes after me. That's really, yeah, that's really but bro. Me you're but up right there now, right now, man. I'm me. You are up next, bro. I was telling you that at California after the show. I was like, you're up next, bro. I'm telling you. And, bro, that next year, you fucking killed it, man. It's awesome, bro. And I, I had another question about the uh, the match at Satika. When when they taped your arm, did, did the tape does the tape actually do anything or not? Nah? Like, when they taped your arm, uh, when they tried to tape it shut? Do you think that helped at so- all? For a minute, it does, but like, uh, yeah. but if you start bleeding too much, mm-hmm. it just starts to it just starts to slip down. Now, yeah, honestly, I feel like we need if we would have like duct tape and wrapped it up good a good few times Sabu level. If we would have mm-hmm. wrapped it Sabu level, you know, because yeah. uh, I had an incident in California against uh, against Bev. Uh, mm-hmm. My I I end up I end up fucking. Catching a straight piece of glass in my hand that I thought was just a little, just a little piece, but it was very mm-hmm. deep and fucking just started bleeding like crazy. And I tried to tape it and it happened again. You'll probably be seeing yeah. that once fucking once that match drops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro, I gotta check that one out. I don't, I don't think I've t- seen that one. Before. I don't know how many times, how many matches now is it that I've that I've almost died where I'm like, nah, I'm keep going, bro. <laughs> Every, I hear about it all the time. I'm always hearing about matches where, where you're just bleeding, man. Everyone's like, Hoodfoot is the best bleeder in deathmatch wrestling today, and I, I, I agree with him, man. Straight up. I, I appreciate it, man. It's like, I am. <laughs> I, it's a gift and a curse, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And bro, I, I also had this question. So that that happened pretty early in the match. I'm pretty. I, I, I think I'm right, but. It looks like it opened up a lot from you wrestling her with the open wound, right? From what I could see, at least, it looked like a. It, it was always it was already a big gash, but it, it. I think it looked a little bit bigger at the end of the match. Do you think that was from like picking her up and stuff? Uh, it could get like it, I. I definitely think it. I exacerbated the problem because uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm being real, like yeah. in hindsight being twenty twenty, I probably should have stopped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and not wrestle fucking another, I want to say, another, I think we wrestled another 10, another 7 yeah. 10. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I probably shouldn't have took the two flakes off the bleaches or the yeah. fucking, or the, you know, <laughs> the legs could do the wrestling, like, keep off the platform. 
But hey, man, <laughs> fuck it, bro. Bro, you you fucking killed that shit, man. It's fucking awesome, bro. I, but I, the whole time, I'm like, dude, how is he wrestling with this cut? Most guys would be like, bro, that's it. It's over. And, or the refs would stop it, you know? But it just kept going, and I was like, all right, let's see what happens. <laughs> shit was fucking gold, though. Yeah. yeah uh, Loved it. To be honest, man, fucking Danny, Danny really wanted to really, – he's going to call the match. And uh, oh. if you see the if you look at the footage, you'll see you see Sean. He runs over, uh, he gets the message, he comes back to me, and I tell him, it's like I told him, like, yo, so Danny, please do not stop this match. Yeah, and then for real. he basically said, hey, he said, hey, it, it, he was like, huh? he, I told he told me, came back, he said, hey, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Like you're doing it. I said, yeah, I'm Damn. fucking, I'm not stopping. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be real with you, again, I probably shouldn't have wrestled another seven or ten, mat- ten minutes. Uh, Damn. I probably should have fucking tried to go straight to the fucking finish or whatever, but fuck yeah. it, man. Y'all paid, mo- y'all paid money to see this shit. Like, right, mm-hmm. I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to give y'all everything I got. Oh, you did, bro. You delivered, man. You definitely fucking delivered, bro. And I've seen some wrestlers just like stop. No, you you just went hard, bro. Fucking the whole time, nonstop. And bro, you you guys went so hard they were throwing money into the ring, bro. I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've ever seen that in death matches. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Like, yo, I, honestly, I I I didn't expect it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's a it's a sign of gratitude and fucking man, fucking shit. It's so good. Bro, you deserve good. that shit, bro. And I, I'm just, I'm just a humble, I'm just a humble servant of the fucking blood, man. Like mm-hmm. I, I get in there and I do what I got to do. Um, yep. But to see, to see that there's acknowledgement that what I'm doing is transcending and like actually, like is actually. Uh, Impacting people enough to separate yeah. their money with their money for real, man. It's something that fucking means the world to me. And and that that wasn't the last time that that happened. I'm pretty sure I've seen that it, it started a little trend. Not not in every company, but I'm pretty sure I've seen a few more death matches where people were throwing money in at the end. I'm trying to think of what the match was, but but I've seen. But I'm pretty sure you guys were the first ones for that to happen, though. From what I remember, I man, I was. Like, I would, so I would love to claim that, but I'll be I'll be honest. Uh, it's a it's a luchador it's a luchador a luchadora uh, mm-hmm. tradition. Uh, oh, to throw okay. money in the ring, and to throw money in the ring that like of individuals that you feel like they performed crazy. Wow! Uh, huh? They had a great match. So wow. for them for, to be part of that tradition, it means yeah, the world yeah. to me. Um, for real. But if that is the first time it's happened in a death match, fuck mm-hmm. man, I love it. Like, like hell yeah, it's <laughs> Bro, that's so awesome. For real, I'm I'm comfortable. I'm, right now, I'm I'm vibing. I'm living. Yeah, I'm a fucking champion. Look, I'm a North American death match champion, man. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a title I carry with pride. I think yeah. that was good for now, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on, bro. Thank you so much, man. Man, thanks, man. I appreciate you no having problem, me, man. Bro. It's been dope. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. You have a good one. Enjoy your night, bro. Get ready for you this too, weekend. bro. You're rock and roll. Thanks, dog. You too. It's no problem, man. For sure. Later. Thanks for watching the video guys that right there was Hoodfoot's second arm incident as if the one with Slade wasn't bad enough link in description that match was a fucking banger bro it was just non-stop chaos I highly suggest checking out ICW no holds barred on IWTV put a link to their page in the description also also while you're on IWTV type in the ZPWN network and check out some of the matches I'm doing a series on there with Vinny Ratlock where I go over some unreleased death matches Most of the matches took place in Indiana back in the 2000s, and I'm the lucky motherfucker that gets to present them. 
This month in episode 2, we'll be seeing Fat Stuff versus Kyle Cobain in a lit light tubes deathmatch. Just type in ZPWN on IWTV. Can't wait to see you guys there. I had an insane battle with YouTube over the last week, but it's finally over. Back chopping up more shit for you guys. I've been meaning to post this, but I said to myself it would be so much better if I got Hoodfoot to speak on it. So I did my thing and I got Hoodfoot in the fucking video. Comment below how you think he got that cut on his arm. Really think it's from when she hit him with the bundle. And we got some sick death matches for October. This weekend is CZW's 20th year anniversary of Tournament of Death. It was supposed to happen last month, but there was a shitload of rain and they had to cancel it. So we'll be seeing it this weekend. It's not going to be live stream because there's no Wi-Fi on DJ's farm, but it will be posted that night. I got my flight set and I hope to see you guys there. 20 years of Tournament of Death, bro. That's so fucking awesome. That same night, GCW will be at Showboat putting on their Fight Club Art of the War Games match. They flew over Jun Kasai, Masashi Takeda, Takashi Sasaki, Toru Segura, and Violento Jack. They're going up against Nick Gage, Cyclope, Miedo, Rina, and John Wayne Murdoch. And they're setting up two rings for it. The shit's gonna be wild. On the 21st and 2nd, you can see IWA Deep South Carnage Cup 13 at StreamXBW.com. As always, you can check me out on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Look up Blako561 on all the apps, and Facebook's in the description. My email's in the description, too, in case you want to reach out. And, bro, please follow me on fucking TikTok, man. Don't forget to subscribe to the second channel, Blako5612. If you'd like to talk about death matches and crazy shit 24-7, head to the Discord. There's a link to all my social medias and my email in the description. Feel free to hit me up at any time. I've had a good amount of new subscribers, so if you're new to the channel, please consider checking out patreon.com slash 561 Because my YouTube videos are so graphic, I can't make any money off of them at all. So I have a Patreon. If you want to show support, just type in patreon.com slash 561 into your browser. I just threw up Almost Illegal Volume 1 and XEG's World's Wildest Fights Volume 1. Next, I'm doing a Patreon exclusive on a rare-ass match between Pondo and Matsunaga. You could see all of this fucking rare-ass content for literally less than a drink at McDonald's, bro. I just uploaded the stop sign incident that happened not too long ago. Angel's beautiful face gets fucking wrecked, bro. It's so crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It's already available on the Patreon, so sign up and watch it. Join the Patreon family today for exclusive content, and you could get in on some giveaways. And that leaves you my major shout out and special thank you to my Patreon family. That's Wolfie Kohaku, Matt Watts, Logan Flanagan, Thomas Sanchez, It Sucks Sandwich Film, CL Vision, Crashy, Benjamin Ailing, Brain Wrongs, Yogi Dick, Jeremy McCarley, Martin Guerrero, Jake Steele, Chris Graham, Calculating Infinity, Baker, KJR, His Abyssal, Hollow Point, my new best friend Christian, Stuart McFerrin, Alex Byrne Tattoos, Adam James, Kelly Ray Band, Brian Wargotch, Josh Taylor, Christopher Perellas, Dylan Mullins, Diesel, It's Me, It's Me, It's Chat GPT, Crack Yo, John Botterio, Brian Cole, well, standing in name and Shane Morgan, Mr. Tobias, Nick Normal, UILNR, Patty Von Clambit, Furos Furos, Bong Studley, Grave Memories, Guavion, CJ Dickmeyer, Marcus Martin, Wayne Conway, Coma Kid, Garrett, Ramey, Van Murphy, Joshua Rysick, Twisted Insane, Dan Hannix, These Nuts, The Horror Master, Andy A, Osvaldo Q Anonis, Dime Sack Rick Styles, Insane Messiah, Matthew McAllister, Alexander Bat, Abel Slayer, Legend 22, Kelly Miller, Liam 26, Daniel Smith, Eric Buduin. For my second page hitters, we got Josh Anderson, Mick Fipp, Yuki Noise, Tyler Drunk Adam, Gage Gwynn, Brother Blake Sullivan, Pubini, Ryan Bodie, Dio Valdi, Toxic D. Glover, Ephraim Neves, Andrew Francis, Snowbex, Brian Fountainelle, Corsell, Shreds, Caustic Grasp, James Rowney, Frank Baker, Daniel J, Noah Guccinator, Gagnon, Daniel Rodriguez, Chris Heyman, John Michael Montgomery, Brad Heck, Patrick Shepard, Liquid Mike, Ben West, Tyler Bennett, Mason Reed, Reaper, James Koenig, Sign, Chris Not Saying, James Frost, Luke the Cardis, Greg Folk, Lock Zombie, Form known as Troy Thomas, Austin is a butthole, Ryan Hunter Weaver, Undead Prodigy 23, Anthony Kappa, Dog Soup, Andy Ace Crow, John Bender, James Rusby, Connor Lawn, Jack for Life, Dylan Peterson, Demon of Strong Style, Kevin Roscom, Chris J. Jesse, Chris Meckick, Gavin Turner, Shrapnel Killer, Con from Outer Space, Chris Langu, War Chief, Dragonbone, Die Young, Doug, Chief Who, Party Marty 520, Joe Hurley, Susa 617, Rob Brown, Zaffa, Josh Street, And for my third fucking page hitters, we got Honeywind, My Fear, Jeffrey Combs, Eddie Rodriguez, The Ultim Zero, Billy Messiah, Zach Smith, Otizimo, Lefty, Sori Masson, Nadimi Racing, Kevin Gordon, Sam Bella Field, David Drummond, Dennis 248, your boy Adam Steed, Dave Davis.
Graham Reed, Jivero, Mike, Rich Green, Chris Maggot, Sterling Hyatt, Ryan McCann, Bling Bling Boy, Dustin Lowry, Jordan L, Joe Torius, Driz, Mr. August Records, Laporg, Sean, Eddie, Joshua Lowry, Wally Havoc, Jordan Sostu, Tyler Alexander, Tommy Boy, James Howard, Colin Boyd, Anthony Barnes, Ryan Johnson, The Red Misery, Uncle Trip, Michael G, M. Blade, Tom, Mark from Buffalo, CJ McNally, It Hurts to Pee. Matt Clark, Fadgetpool, Lucas Brown, Mike Bowman, Drake fucking Wirtz, Kevin J. Brown, River, Velocity Mark, Hayden Johnson, Greg Wilkins, Kevin Smith, Alex, Anthony Miller, Clyde Kobe, Cold, Mark Price, Tell John, and finally we got the fourth fucking page hitters, bro. We got Chris DeCastro, Nick E. Lee 666, Vinny Doom, and last but not least, the Dan who sold the world. The growth on the Patreon has been fucking amazing. I haven't got too many requests as I usually have, so if you have an idea, drop it in the comments. Sadika's just so fucking insane in the ring, bro. She'll do anything, and she has stiff people a few times. She's not a big girl, but she can go in a deathmatch. I love you guys almost as much as my crush on Sadika, and that's gonna be pretty fucking hard to beat, guys. But as always, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.